All right, so the second problem, a um, 3D state of stress. So we need to look at the 3D uh, at this cut, solve for the three forces and three moments at that cut, and each of those forces and each of those moments could create a stress and then combine similar stresses. All right, so at this cut, uh, sometimes it's helpful to kind of redraw. Uh, so here we've got this beam right here and we cut it right here. And so at this cut, uh, da, 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 well, let's see. I, I, the axes are not defined yet, so I would define these axes um, yourselves. So define them yourselves. Um, all right, I'm doing this X, Y, Z. This is not the best uh, way to define them. Uh, but, you know, you can define your axes however you want them. Um, and in the end, we'll, we'll all get the, the, well, just define your axes, sorry, however you want to. Okay, so <clears throat> at this cut, right here, at this cut, we might have an FX, we might have an internal FY, we might have an internal FZ, we also might have a moment mx an internal moment my an internal moment mz all right so three forces three uh moments uh we we do have this external 400 and this 300 right there okay so let's solve for uh fx fy FZ, maybe it'll give myself a little bit more room here for my moment equations, MX, MY, MZ. All right, so I want to solve for that internal FX, internal FY, internal FZ. The forces, you might could do this without really summing the forces equal to zero. You could just think about, hey, what forces at the cut do I need to counteract the external forces, you know, away from the cut? Uh, but <clears throat> if we want to, you know, do this... Um, kind of the same method, have a good method we can use. So this is our method, summing all the forces equal to zero. All right, so I've got an internal FX, but I don't have any other forces in the X direction, do I? No. So that, I guess, FX equals zero. I've got an internal FY, um, and then a positive 300. That's it. So FY, negative 300 pounds, and FZ and 400 so fz negative 400 pounds did you get that could you have gotten that from just by looking at the figure many times you can get that just by looking at the figure that i need an fx of zero an fy of negative 300 and fz of negative 400 to counteract all the other forces acting uh, acting there now the moments i think is harder all right, you have to think about what type of moment does that force create? What type of moment or moments do these forces create? Let's we'll start with that 400. The first thing I'm seeing is it's going to spin about this. It's going to create this moment in what I'm calling the x direction. So in my x equation, uh, let me not forget my internal mx, my internal my, my internal mz. <clears throat> but this 400, it would create an x moment. 400 pounds, and its moment arm, 1.5 feet. Now, positive or negative? If I were to rotate this using my right hand, curling my four fingers in the direction of the curl, direction of the rotation, my thumb is pointed in the negative x direction. Let me make sure this makes sense. The 400 is in the z direction. That moment arm is a y dimension. So, yeah, makes sense that it is an x moment. <clears throat> Okay, but that 400 is also above the cut. That 400 is also above the cut. Do you see that it creates that rotation too? It's over the cut, pushing over right there. <clears throat> and so this would be in the about the spinning about the y axis. So it's a y moment, 400 pounds times its moment arm of five feet above the cut. Um, and it, if I curl my fingers in that direction, my Y 
and my thumb is pointed in the positive Y. All right, and so that that those are the moments created by uh, created by this uh, 400 pound force. Right, those are the moments created by that 400 pound force. So a one force. That's in that's all in the Z direction. It can cause a Y moment and an X moment if it has both an X moment arm and a Y moment arm. Does that make sense to you? Let me say that again. A force in the Z direction can create. So here's my force in the Z direction. It can create two moments. It can create two moments. It'll create a Y moment. If it has an X moment arm, do you see here is its X moment arm. It is above the cut by five feet. It can also create an X moment if it has a Y moment arm. It is 1.5 feet, you know, over here on this side of the cut, right? On that side of the cut. Okay, now let's look at the um, other force, the 300 pound force. What kind of, can you visualize what kind of bending, what kind of moment it would create? It's, it's over top of here. It's going to bend over here, creating a rotation about the Z axis. Uh, so in my Z moment equation, 300, it is five feet. Now pause for a negative. If I was to curl my right hand fingers uh, about here, this would be, my thumb would be in the negative. Um, Z direction. Um, does this make sense? I've got a that was in the Y direction. This moment arm is in the X. So yeah, that would create a Z. Now that's the only moment that that 300 pound force would create. Why? Uh, because it's not offset. It's not above. It's not in front of this uh, X Y plane. It's not behind this X Y plane. All right? It has no Z moment arm. Let me kind of state what I was saying about the other force. A Y force can create a Z moment if it has an X moment arm. Now a Y force could also show up here in my X moment arm if it has a Z, right? If, if I have a force in the Y, if it had a Z moment arm, is there any moment arm in the Z direction? Is this offset from the cut in the Z direction, no. It's not offset in the Z direction, so there's no uh, moment in the X. Okay? All right. Uh, how about this? It, what, is, is that 1.5 feet a moment arm? Uh, no, it's in the same direction as the force. So a Y force can't have a Y moment arm. Right? The moment arm is perpendicular to the force. The moment arm is perpendicular to the force. So I think that's it. I think that those are all the moments that I've got. I can sum all my moments to be equal to zero, and I can get, let me clean this up a little bit, um, and so then I can get my internal MX, my internal MY, my internal MZ. Let the math do the work for you. Uh, positive 600 pound feet, negative 2,000 pound feet, Feet, right, I'm solving for this, it's equal to zero, so to take that over, that's why it's negative. Um, and 1500 pound feet, those are my internal moments, my internal moments at the cut. And again, I, I've, I've defined these axes kind of weird, but the, according to my axes, okay. That wasn't even the hard part of the problem. Well, maybe that was the hard part of the problem, but that wasn't even the main part of the problem. The main part of the problem is finding the stresses, finding the stresses that each of these could have caused. So first I like to look at the normal, the axial, the forces and moments coming out of the cut uh, because those are different than the others. All right, so this one would have been my N over A stress, uh, but obviously it's zero. This one is going to be my tau equals TR over J. Whereas these others are going to be my bending MY over I, my MY over I, um, and these are going to be my VQ over IT tau, VQ over IT tau, VQ over IT. Now, 
Th th that's what it could be. All right, but it really matters what um, it really matters what point on my cross section I'm looking at. So this one I've edited. I, I want to look at point B. Uh, but I don't want to look at point B on the inner. That would be a lot more uh, interesting, difficult. We're not getting into. Uh, I don't even know all that. Let's move point B to the outer edge. So point B is on the outer edge. Uh, let's see. Here's the Z direction, Y direction right there. Okay. So at first I would find the N over A. And that one, it wouldn't matter whether I was at point B, point A. It, it, that one is uniform everywhere. Uh, but it's zero, so it's zero in this case. So now, let me look at Fy. If I have an Fy of negative 300 pounds, uh, that can create a shear stress of VQ over IT. Let me go right here. Let me look right here. So I have a shear stress in the y direction of negative 300. Uh, so what would that look like? That would look like this right here, 300 pounds right here. That would be VQ over IT. Um, that would be a maximum at the neutral axis. Where is the neutral axis? The neutral axis is perpendicular to my V. The neutral axis would be perpendicular to my V. Um, so it'd be at a maximum. So if I was at point A, then I would really need to calculate this. But uh, the leading and trailing edges are going to be zero for shear. So this is zero uh, at point B because point B on the outer, we're calling it edge right there. So there's no shear stress due to that Y um, shear force. All right, but how about this FZ of negative 400 pounds? It's a shear. It could cause a tau of VQ over IT, um, but it depends on what point I'm looking at. All right, so let's look back over here. If I have a sh force of negative 400, I have a force. Here's my Z direction. I have a force going that way of 400 pounds, my neutral axis would be right here. Uh, my stresses would be at a maximum right across there. My stresses would be zero right here, zero right here. And so at point B, yes, it does have some stress at point B. Let me redraw that. Uh, let me try to redraw this cut. Um, so if I'm at point B right here, if I have a shear force of 400 right here. All right, so let's do this. VQ over ITV is 400. Q is Y bar prime A prime. Uh, let me come back to Y bar prime and let me just look at the A prime. What is A prime? A, a prime is the area away from my point, away from the neutral axis. Here's my neutral axis. Uh, so the A prime would be that area right there would be that area right there. Um, and my Y bar prime would be the centroid of that area. Ugh, I don't think I want to calculate the centroid of that area. So, but what's, what can we do? I don't think we've, I don't know if we've done this for circular beams, let's, but we can do this. Absolutely. For the Q, it's Y bar prime, A prime, but you can break it up into two shapes. And you do Y bar prime A prime of one shape plus Y bar prime A prime of another shape. Or how about this? The Y bar prime <coughs> A prime of that whole half circle minus, minus that Y bar prime A prime of that green half circle. Because I can do half circles. All right, I can do half circles. Let, let me bring this down here to give me a lot more room. All right, tau is V. So I'm going to do the pink, if it was a solid half circle, the Y bar prime of a solid half circle, that's on our formula sheet somewhere. Let me just kind of show that it, it is on our formula sheet, but it'd be really helpful if you just went ahead and memorized it. 
4r over 3 pi, that's the centroid of a half circle. 4r over 3 pi. And that y bar prime is the distance from my neutral axis to the centroid of that pink half circle. So 4r uh, 2.5 over 3 pi. And the area of that is would be pi r squared uh, half of that divided by 2, pi r squared over 2. All right, minus this green, minus this green y bar prime a prime. <clears throat> the y bar prime a prime, the y bar prime is 4 its r over 3 pi times pi r squared over 2. And that, that was a tough one, but we, we got it now. That would be the q, the uh, first moment of area for that point B right here. All right, divided by I. I for a circle on a formula sheet. Pi by 4, R to the 4th. Pi by 4, R to the 4th. But that's for a circle. This isn't a circle. This is a tube that it has a hollow center. Uh, but we can do um, R to the 4th minus R, uh, R outer to the 4th minus R inner to the 4th right there. Okay, that mathematically this is not equal to that to the fourth. You have to take the radiuses to the fourth separately, right? The outer radius to the fourth minus the inner radius to the fourth. Right. So there's the i right there. You might just go ahead and and get that value because you we, we're going to reuse it anytime we see an i for v q over i t v q over m y over i. I think we're going to use it again m y over i. <clears throat> so maybe go ahead and get that value. Uh, and T, what is the thickness? The thickness right here. Uh, not just this thickness right here of 0.5, uh, but you see this A prime, it kind of it, it's kind of where your A prime is attached to the rest of your beam. Uh, so it would be both uh, 0.5 and 0.5, so a thickness of 1. Whew, all right, and so then we've got our shear stress is 11 or 112.3 sorry here 112.3 uh i think whoa no 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 whoa, whoa 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 no sorry uh pounds inches 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 everything is in inches <clears throat> we've got inches squared on top inch to the fourth so pounds per square inch psi uh but in what direction in the negative z direction right whatever direction the the shear force is in that's the direction all of these shear stresses no matter where i'm at even if i was over here the shear stresses would be in that direction of course there would be zero right here leading and trailing edge <clears throat> but in that in the z direction right there write that down because if i want to combine similar stresses similar shear stresses I got to be, you know, are they all? Are they in the positive z, negative z, or they could be in the y? I wouldn't combine any z, any stresses in the z direction with any stresses in the y direction. Okay, we did the forces. Let's do the moments. Let's do the moments. Let's start with this m x, six hundred pound feet. Did you notice? I really need to be careful with my units. These are pound feet. These moment arms were feet, so our moments are in pound feet. Um, we'll see how that works out. This can cause, it might be zero, but this can cause a TR over J. A TR over J. Well, the shear, the shear, what does the shear do to the TR over J? The twisting moment. Think about this. This twisting moment that is twisting about the X direction. Uh, it's about the positive X direction, so it is twisting this way um, would be would cause a twisting like that at the very very middle it would be zero but any other place um, as long as it has an r what is that r that r is the distance away from the center from the centroid of that cross section so as long as it's not at the very very center um, then it will have some tr over j so this point b on the outside edge has tr over j right there so let's do T R over J. So this would be T. What is the T? Well, just that uh, moment. 
All right, torque is a moment. R, how far is my point away from the point from the uh, center? 2.5 inches. And J, J is pi by 2 R to the fourth. But again, we need to do this R outer, R inner. Also, I haven't really mentioned this, but J is double I. J is double the I. Four circles. Um, yeah, and, and symmetric. For circles, you can see that J is double I. And we do a lot of circles for this problem. I think this problem... Yeah, I think we've only done circles for this problem. Uh, so that's just a, just a no to double check. Um, all right. Uh, but anyway, this units would not work out exactly because of this foot right there. Get rid of that foot, change it to inches. So multiply it times 12. And now I've got, yeah, pounds. I'm left with pounds. And I've got two inches on top, four inches on the bottom. Pounds per inch pounds per square inch. So this would be 497.2 PSI. It's a shear, right? That force is on the face, right? It is parallel to the cut. <clears throat> so it's a shear force. And then let me just put in parentheses in the what direction, All right? This was a positive moment. A positive moment would make my hand twist and my thumb is pointing in the positive X. So that's why I drew those arrows right here. And we're looking right here. This is not in the positive Z direction. That is in the negative Z direction. Negative Z direction. Negative Z direction. Okay, took care of MX. How about MY? MY was negative 2,000 pound feet. Um, it could cause a bending stress of MY over I. It could cause a bending stress of MY over I. So let's think about this. Maybe we'll redraw this right here. All right, so this is Y. This is Z. If I have a bending moment in the Y direction, my thumb would... Be, so this is a negative Y direction my thumb would be pointed in this negative y direction my um palm the bottom of my palm would be right here the tops of my fingers would be right here and i would be bending this uh beam a negative y moment would cause it to bow out back behind here right would cause it to bow out back this is behind here in the Z direction. So let's think about this. Uh, back here, I would have tension. Over here, I would have compression. But at point B, I would have nothing. At point B, I would have nothing. I need to go, I should have gone ahead and drawn my neutral axis. For moments, for bending moments, the neutral axis is the axis of bending. For bending moments, the neutral axis is right there. And there's no tension or compression on the neutral axis. There would be compression over here. There would be tension over here. But at point B, there would be nothing. At point B. Okay. All right, but MZ, a moment in the Z direction, 1,500, so a positive 1,500-pound moment, MY over I. Let me draw my cut very badly right here, Y, Z. Uh, my neutral axis is the Z. So if I was looking at the Z, anything at the Z, so if I was looking at point A, there'd be nothing. Um, but I'm not. Uh, this is a positive Z moment, so my thumb is pointed in the positive Z. My palm, the base of my palm is right here. My fingers are right here. I would be bending this pool noodle, and it would bow back this way. It would bow back this way 
in the behind this Y, okay, it would bow this way. So if I was looking at it from the Y direction, it would be bowing backwards. I, I could not see this bowing behind that beam. So what does that mean? Tension on this back side and compression on this front side. Tension, tension on this back side, compression on this front side. All right, so this would be an M, 1,500 pound feet. A Y, my point Y, B, I'm sorry, my point B is 2.5 inches away from my neutral axis. Over the I, the I, I probably already have that in my calculator. Pi by 4, 2.5 minus 2 uh, to the fourth, each of those. And then a unit conversion of 12 to get that feet inch, 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 inch. All right. And so this would be 2488 PSI compression right here on the front. Compression on the front. Okay, so now I'm ready to combine all the stresses that are similar in the same direction. Combine all the stresses that are similar. All right, what kind of normal stresses do I have in compression or tension? That one. Uh, this one would have been zero. Whoops. Do, 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 do. And this one was zero, so actually that, that's the only normal stress. So my normal stress would be 2488 PSI compression. And my tau, my tau at point B. All right, so where are my taus? Here's some tau in the negative Z direction. Here's some tau, also in the negative z direction. That's it. I can combine both of those. They're both in the negative direction, so I can add them together. Uh, 609.5 PSI in the negative z direction. In the negative z direction. All right. Not too bad, but we've got a process for it. I think the hardest part is, and I don't, I really don't do a good job, even if we were in class, of you know showing these positives and negative moments. Um, um, I don't have a great way of every single time. This is what would, um, you know, positive Z moment with a, you know, a moment arm. Um, you know, there's no, no strict rules to follow. It's really just visualizing. Um, and so this, this compression tension, that, that's definitely a hard part. Um, we can talk about that in the review session um, if you want. Okay, what I'm looking for is a normal stress, a shear stress, and tell me what direction your shear stress is in, positive or negative, and what direction it is pointing. All right.